Beautiful. Print that. That was great. That was the unofficial start. Okay, we need some punctuation in that second one. <laughs> Take two. Hi, everyone. It's your host, Mary Shea and... Harish Mohan. We've got really exciting news. We're launching the Revenue Innovators Podcast this summer, where we'll talk with the greatest minds about revenue strategy and execution. We hope you'll be there for the big release. But in the meantime, we've already started the conversation with a handful of experts about how they're thinking about revenue operations in the larger RevOps economy. Today, we're talking to Mark Lerner, head of marketing at RevOps.io. Mark shares some of the really interesting insights like how COVID-19 changed the way RevOps functions within a company. Excited for you to take a listen. Also, don't forget to follow along for more with more interviews each week and get the latest updates on the Revenue Innovators podcast. You can find them all on Sales Hackers Revenue Operations channel. Now, let's get into the interview with Mark. So my name is Mark Lerner. I'm the head of marketing at a company called RevOps. Um, we are a quote to cash solution. Uh, we, we focus on what we call optimizing the enterprise checkout process. So for, um, you know, kind of that, that process from when like an opportunity is, is created all the way through kind of uh, the, you know, um, generating revenue. Um, we help companies kind of create these flexible quoting process to support uh, different kinds of pricing models and uh, all the way through kind of uh, account activation and provisioning. Um, so we really kind of focus on that quote to cash process. Um, we're a relatively young company. Um, I've been uh, the head of marketing for about nine months now. Um, we're about 18 people. Um, and that's doubled kind of in, in the time that I've been here. Um, we've raised a seed round of funding up until now um, of about uh, 1.8 million, 1.6 million. Um, and uh, you know, we're growing really fast. Our CEO is actually the uh, first engineering hire at uh, Twilio. Um, and uh, he kind of built the revenue engine there. Um, and that was kind of the brainchild of uh, RevOps uh, as a product. Um, and so that kind of, he, he understood there kind of the, the, um, importance of needing to, um, kind of support more complex pricing models. And that was, you know, what, what kind of motivated him to create RevOps. Um, you know, my background's really, uh, as a B2B marketer, early stage startups in the SaaS world. Um, and so I've really kind of, uh, brought you know, that, that experience um, to this space, which, you know, revenue operations is really kind of exploding in terms of interest and companies kind of taking on that role. Um, and it's really awesome to kind of be at the forefront of that and um, help bring understanding of what that role is and, and kind of the philosophy and mindset behind it um, and be able to really interact with some of the like biggest thought leaders in the space and, and learn from them as well. Well, it's, it's always hard explaining to my parents what I do. Um, you know, uh, I think that uh, people probably, you know, people, my parents or, or relatives probably think, and I don't think they really understand what I do at all. Um, they probably just think I write blog posts, which is part of what I do, but not really all of it. Um, you know, especially all the tools and technology that goes behind it and, and what those things are and, and the terminology we use. Um, you know, and and then in terms of like what the company does, um, explaining that to people is difficult. So, you know, I, I always have this idea of like, I need some way to explain it to my grandmother, you know, and without, you know, how do you make it so, uh, you know, so easily understood that someone completely outside of this world kind of get, you know, they say, well, what does your company do? Um, you know, I, I think I started out just saying it's a tool for sales teams. Um, but now I really am able to narrow it down that just it helps companies kind of um, get teams working together on the same page and increase their sales and, and shorten the cycle um, to close a deal. Uh, and that's that's kind of the crux of it. There's a lot of other things that go into it. Um, but, you know, I, I think there's there are people who probably nod their head and when I tell them I'm in, in marketing and they're just like, oh, OK. But I don't think it's quite understood. It, obviously, we know. And people listening to this probably know. Um, and I think generally, as marketers, 
though it's changed, um, we don't get as much respect as we used, as we as we should, I think, for the work we do. Um, but some of the tools that we have in place now can really kind of identify the value that we bring to the bottom line, right? You know, tools that can um, for you know show the amount of revenue that can be associated with marketing activities um, really kind of shows that value. So um, I think it's getting a lot better. I think that there's a lot of people that uh, are trying to kind of glom on to the title uh, as a way to show uh, we have somebody in this role and they think it's just kind of a fancier word or just a way to um, give somebody a nicer title that's in like maybe a sales operations role um, and just say you're now head of revenue operations and that, you know, we've given you, a, you know, an increase in your importance. Um, whereas you're really not setting that person up for success because that's, you know, a sales operations role is kind of focused in one area of, of, of you know, of the go to market organization and RevOps is much more broad. Um, so that, you know, it's really, I think that a big problem is, is, is around just kind of using the title so that you can say that you have that role and not really setting someone up for success um, to be able to work across teams. And not only that, you know, deal with the competing needs of different teams. You know, marketing comes and says, I need this new field, or sales comes and says, I need to deal with some issue in the CRM, and customer success has their own thing. And being able to kind of juggle the needs of those teams and understand where can I put my limited resources to help those teams is something that maybe somebody who's in a role that's more focused on one of those teams is not really coming into the, into the role uh, with that understanding of how to do that. And that's, so that's a challenge. And I think it's, it's just setting up for failure. I mean, I think that it's interesting, right? There are how many blog posts are there out there? Like what is RevOps, right? I mean, it's just everywhere. Um, and it's the way I think it's constantly evolving, but it's really, I think a role that sits on top of, um, you know, what you would call the go to market team. So every part of the company that interacts with the customer journey and so that generally looks at like marketing sales and a customer success but all the way through finance and even accounting especially kind of on the part of closing a deal and and getting a customer and, and generating revenue it sits on top of all those um parts of the company and helps create this singular uh, view across that whole journey. So each of those people can optimize their little piece of it. Whereas sales operations may be much more focused on, on just sales and it still, you know, has these kind of silos between those teams. And uh, the risk there is that again, you know, there are these competing KPIs. So from a marketing perspective, I'm looking at, oh, marketing qualified leads, right? But a salesperson doesn't really care about marketing qualified leads. They don't, you know, they only care about, you know, the opportunities that they're able to generate. But, the, you know, finance is really only focused on, on their thing. And so they have these kind of competing narratives and competing uh, goals um, that really kind of affects um, the the focus of the company. And, and, and so a company kind of needs this high level a map of everything that's going on. And so that's really, I think, where RevOps comes into focus. So, I mean, it's still in its infancy, right? I mean, it's, it, it's constantly evolving and it's really, I think, you know, I read a stat that there were like, you know, only 30% of companies or something had the role, but like 50% were considering or something along those lines. I'm probably not getting those numbers absolutely correct. Um, so it's really kind of a growing role that continues to grow as a function. And it's clear to me that, um, you know, a big forcing function of why it's become really kind of in the fore now is, is COVID-19 has really um, affected and pushed companies to invest considerably in it. Um, you know, that we're, we're, we're all working remotely and, and, you know, these kind of communication between teams could have just been me walking over to someone's desk is now it's all remote. Um, and so more than ever, they really need uh, somebody in charge of making sure that alignment and visibility is happening. And so it seems pretty obvious to me that that's not, we're not ever going to go back to what was normal before. You know, I don't think we're all going to be going into the office all the time. Um, again, uh, I certainly am not. And so it, it's really kind of put it in the fore and, and I think that's going to continue as we go. I think that, um, you know, there was a confluence of events that happened. Um, you know, the, the sheer amount of tools that we now use today has increased exponentially. There's an app for everything. Um, we have apps inside of apps. There are other apps where it's just like uh, an app where you hold all your other apps. And there's every team has tools and there's just so much data involved everywhere. 
that it becomes really difficult to, you know, find the signal and the noise, and you really need somebody to be able to do that uh, and manage all of those things and connect them together. Um, and so that's one thing. Um, I think the second thing that's really happened is that uh, the buyer expectation on the B2B side has changed considerably. Um, you know, one of the, my personally, I think that um, part of that has to do with our B2C buying experiences that we all have now. It's like become much more con customer centric, right? We, we, the, the, the company selling something no longer owns the message, right? We all can do our own research and we go to Amazon, we find the right reviews, you know, we do all our research. We really know what we're going to buy before we buy it right before we really even talk to someone and i think that that has rubbed off on b2b buyers because you know i actually had a conversation um with uh sean lane from drift because i've been doing these interviews and he said something really interesting um he's i have it written here just so i can remember exactly you know if you or i were to uh, order from doordash for dinner or buy something on amazon or an uber we want it fast and convenient and on our terms right and that's just an expectation we have that's just kind of that's that's table stakes now um, but when we go to work, we don't become, you know, B2B Mark or B2B Sean or B2B Sam, right? We, we are the same person um, and we still have all those same expectations. So I think that's really impacted the way people buy things like software um, from an enterprise or, you know, B2B perspective. Um, and so that along, those two things along with COVID is kind of really um, increasing the need for it are all factors that have really uh, played a part. Yeah, so it's really just changed the way we've conducted business, business generally. You've felt it, I've felt it, we've all felt it, right? I mean, I think that, you know, I, I, it was like, if you look at when COVID hit, um, at, it was, you know, January, February time, and that was companies were doing their sales kickoffs. They already had their plans for the year. They had it all mapped out based on, you know, their, their data and everything like that. And then COVID hits and the entire world turns upside down. And if you look at the companies that did well and the ones that didn't, it, were the, it was the ones that had somebody that was able to quickly pivot using data and, and better understand how, what levers can we pull to deal with the changes um, that are now reality. And those were really companies that had something like a RevOps function. Um, and I think that became very obvious to companies and a lot of them scrambled to try to find somebody that can do this. Yeah, it's definitely changed the way we've conducted business. And, and like I had mentioned earlier, with the remote selling, everyone's gone remote. Um, there's a greater need that, you know, generally we realize that we don't have to go on a plane or, or meet with a person, in, uh, in, you know, in person to win deals. Um, most companies kind of have proven that they can, they can do this remotely. Um, and so it's, I think just generally, it's, it's impacted the way people understand why it's necessary now. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not, like I had mentioned, I don't think we're really going to be going back to anything like what was normal before. And so that's really going to put to the fore the need to have this kind of central um, aggregator of visibility and data between these teams so they can all get on the same page and better understand, you know, where are the gaps that they need to uh, optimize. You know, in a, in a, in a perfect world, um, you know, it's really about end to end visibility of that entire customer journey, right? That's kind of been the theme of what, I've, what we've been talking about, right? And so like making sure that, you know, that entire journey is visible across all teams um, and really supporting those teams. But it's not, it's, it's not only about it getting, you know, the too, you know, too much data is bad and too little data is bad, right? It's like a Goldilocks thing. You need to be able to identify and surface the most important data towards the goal of, you know, for revenue and, and all those teams um, so that they don't get blinded by just seeing too much stuff and you see, you miss the forest for the trees or whatever the right metaphor there would be. Um, and so that, that, um, that Nirvana state is really kind of the end to end vis visibility of that entire journey, but only the most important data that um, helps each of those teams kind of optimize their, their part of that journey. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, I think the ultimate state of, of the company should be. The role of revenue operations is, is an evolving one. Um, and there's so much out there about, uh, you know, what is RevOps? This is what RevOps should do. Um, and it, I don't think that it 
is the same for every company, right? I really think that as somebody who comes into a company as a revenue operator, you have to understand where the company is today um, and what the needs are of each of those individual teams and be able to kind of um, prioritize from their individual needs um, for sales or marketing or success or whatever it is towards the long-term goals of the company, um, you know, the revenue goals um, as well. And so it's really about being able to kind of uh, juggle those needs um, and be that kind of um, s centralized um, aggregator of information and, and insights into those different teams um, and, and being able to prioritize. I think that that's an important piece.